Greetings everyone. Today we're going to explore adding and subtracting radicals. All right, let's go over some of the basics first. First main key point that this is the, and this is the toughest part of this lesson, is you can only add or subtract like radicals. Like radicals. So what do I mean? Think back to what you know. If you compare it to what you know, it'll be easier. What are like terms? Meaning, if I gave you a 2x squared plus a 3x minus 4x squared minus 7x, okay? When we combined like terms, we took care of the numbers out front and we carried the variable down. They were like variables. So see how we only combined the numbers out front and then we kept the term as the term. You guys know this very well. So keep that in mind. We're going to take care of the numbers out front and leave the like radical the way it is. All right, so let's take a look at a little bit more information here. I'm going to erase this quick so it's not in the way. So like radicals, let's be a little more specific. They have the same index, meaning the little number out front, whether it be a squared root, cubed root, like index number. And they have the same radicand, meaning the value underneath has to be exactly the same. If it's different in any way, you just can't add or subtract them. Kind of like I can't add an x and a y. I can't add an x and an x squared. They have to be exactly the same to combine them. Always, always to make your life easier, simplify everything first. What do I mean? Um, if you can simplify the radical down, do so. If you can multiply any numbers out front, do so. Um, anything you can do that you've already learned first, do that first. So to combine, so here's the basic, here's the rule. To combine like radicals, you add the numbers in front and you keep the same radicands. So again, if I have a two radical three and I'm adding a five radical three, you add the numbers in front, two plus five is seven, and you keep, 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 keep the same radicand, radical three. That right there, that radical three is going to be the toughest part. So many students multiply or make it a radical six. It doesn't matter. You wouldn't do that if it was an X, right? Again, compare. What if I said this was, instead of radical three, a 2X plus a 5X? You would say, oh, that's a 7X. See, if you keep the X, you keep the radical three. Okay. So if you ever forget and you're not sure, say, what if this was a letter? What would I do? Could we make an acronym for that? What would a letter do? <laughs> or what would a variable do? <laughs> Lame, I know. Enjoy it. All right, let's look at some examples here. So first example, we're going to start off basic. Technically, though, what number's in front of the first radical 2? A 1. So if I have 1 radical 2 plus 3 radical 2s, how many radical 2s do I have? 4 radical 2s. Example 2. That's it. So you might have a problem or two that are that easy, so enjoy it. Example 2. Combine like radicals only. Let's go back to like terms. Remember when we did this, I had you underline like terms, and then we did maybe two lines under the other like terms? Those are the ones I can combine. So let me take a look. I'm actually going to rewrite this first. If I have a 4 radical 3 and a negative 2 radical 3, or I'm subtracting if you want to think of it that way, I have 2 radical 3. See how I got that? Let's take a look here. I have, keep the signs, negative 2 radical 5 
plus 5 radical 5. If I add the numbers out front, I have 3 radical 5. And my last radical here doesn't have a like radical, so it just hangs out by itself. Now, for the signs in the middle, they're still being added, but I need to make note of the signs. It's a positive 3 and it's a positive radical 7. Now, I'm okay if you write this in different ways. What do I mean by that? You could write it as 3 radical 5 plus 2 radical 3 plus radical 7. Or you could write it as radical 7 plus 2 radical 3 plus ra 3 radical 5. You get the gist. So addition's commutative, which means you could write it in any order. Right? So key thing, you can only add like radicals and you keep the common radical. I'm going to circle my answer here. There's my answer. All right, let's take a look at this one. Example three. Uh-oh. I can't subtract. This one has a three. This has a 12. But don't forget the step. You need to simplify first if you can. Radical 12 is a 4 and a 3, which simplifies down to 2 radical 3. If I bring down what was out front, I had a 5 radical 3 subtract. Now I can combine. 5 minus 2 is 3, so I have 3 radical 3s. So even if you don't think you can, you have to check and see if you can. I'll, and here's the thing, you guys. I'm never going to give you a problem you can't do something with. <laughs> so you got to do something, all right? Let's take a look here. Um, I'm going to take care of the first part in blue. So I have 5 radical 12. I'm going to break that apart into 4 times 3. Square root of 4 is 2. And when numbers are written next to each other, they're multiplied. So I actually have a 10 radical 3. On the right side, I got negative 3. I'm going to break apart the 27. It's a 9 and a 3. The squared root of 9 is 3. When numbers are written next to each other, they're multiplied. Remember to keep bringing this down. We haven't touched that yet. 3 times a 3 is a 9. Bring down the like, bring down the radical. Now I can subtract. I have 10 radical 3s minus 9 radical 3s, so I have 1 radical 3. Or you could just write it as radical 3. All right, let's take a look. This is going to be a combination of our operations of multiplying and adding or subtracting. So if you need work on multiplication, see my other videos. First thing is always remember PEMDAS. Okay, in what order do I simplify PEMDAS? Okay. So my suggestion is to multiply first because M comes first, all right? Multiply using the rules of radicals. How do you multiply radicals? Again, see my other video for that. Then add or subtract only the like radicals. So that's today's lesson. Let's put that to use, all right? We're going back to distribution. Like, let's think back here for a second. If I had a 3x and I was distributing on to a 5x minus 7, right? You know you distribute like this. You know you actually multiply. Things change when you multiply. And you write it in clean form. You combine if you can. And if you can't, you're done, right? Same idea. It's just radicals now. Okay, so let's take a look at the first uh, example on this, example five. I'm going to show my arrows. That's You can show work that way. I'm going to write it out. You don't have to. This step's optional. I'm going to show that I have radical two times three times radical ten plus sign in the middle. I have radical two times two times radical forty. Okay, this is to just stress multiplying rules. Okay, so let's look at this piece first. We multiply the numbers out front. We multiply the numbers underneath. Going back to the multiplying rules. I think some of you will be able to see, oh, 1 times 3, 2 times 10. I think your arrows will be enough for this work. Plus sign. Well, I have 1 times 2, 2. 
radical, 2 times radical 40, radical 80. Now I can't add these. They are unlike. So I need to see if I can make them like. I need to simplify. 20 breaks down to a 4 and a 5. 4 breaks down to 2. 6 radical 5. All right, let's look at that 80. The largest perfect square that fits into 80 is 16. 16 fits in five times. Radical 16 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Oh, look, now I can add them. We add the numbers out front. Here's where students a lot of times forget the adding and subtracting rules. If I have 6 radical 5s plus 8 radical 5s, I have 14 radical 5s. It stays radical 5. Okay. So expectation for work. Here's what I would want to see. I want to see the arrows. I want to see that first step of distribution. If you skip that next step, I'm okay. If you jump to maybe, actually, I, I'd be okay if you knew how to simplify straight down to this and then your answer. So this would be almost like three steps. Arrows, multiplied, simplified, add or subtract. Ooh, look at that example on the right. That's a binomial times a binomial, which means you have to either use FOIL or distribution, or you could use that box method if you were struggling. I'm going to stick to distribution, okay? If you feel like you need to relearn one of those, go back and see my polynomials multiplying video. So distribution says take that 3 and distribute it twice first. So I have 3 times 3. I'm going to put a little symbol there so you know. That gets me to 9. I have 3 times negative 4 radical 3. Well, it's going to be a negative. 4 times 3 is 12, and the radical 3 stays. Then on to the next. Radical 3 gets distributed. Radical 3 times 3, this first move, is 3 radical 3. It's a positive. Next, radical 3 times negative 4 radical 3. So I have a 1 times a negative 4, and I have radical 3 times radical 3. you got to know those multiplying rules. That's radical 9. Okay, so here's where we're getting a little bit tricky. Be careful of those rules. That's going to be the toughest part. Now, let's simplify. Um, I notice here that radical 9 is actually 3. So that gets me to 12. Notice how I'm doing sort of columns of work. Ooh, these are like. If I have negative 12 radical 3s and 3 radical 3s, then I have negative 9 radical 3. Oh, you guys, I made a mistake on that 12. Look over there. That was a negative 4. So it should be a negative 12. And I'm going to bring down this 9. Ooh, I've got like terms. 9 minus 12, negative 3. And I still have my negative 9, radical 3. Okay. So I can't combine those because one has a radical and one does not. So that is my final solution. If you need help, if you're struggling, I'm also going to show the box method on the last slide of this video. If you feel like you need it, stick around for that part. So, as always, you know the drill, you guys. Check out Google Classroom. What's the expectation? What's the next step? Check out Power School. What's late? What needs to be worked on? We need to uh, make sure those grades are up to par, okay? If you have questions, let me know. I'll try to help you in a timely manner that I can. Um, until next time. Oh, wait, you guys. This is our last new lesson. Can I get a moment of silence? Don't worry, I'll send you another video next week. I can't just make this the final goodbye. But, um, the, you know, if you're watching this video later, it's the year 2020, so we're all in quarantine, right? 
Um, but I'll send a little update video next week. But until next time, have a good one. All right, so I said if you're struggling with the double distribution or the foil to check out this last slide. So I'm going to also show the box method. Uh, this goes back to my multiplying polynomials video. When you have a binomial, that's two columns, and a binomial, two rows. Sometimes this makes it a little easier, meaning three times three, nine. It's just an organizing tool. I have a three times a radical three, so three radical three. I have a three times negative four radical three, so that would be negative 12 radical three. And I have a negative four radical three times radical three, that'd be a negative four radical nine. You could do the work right in the box. That's a three, that's a negative 12. Then you can see your like terms easier. So that would get me to a negative three. And this would get me to, let's see, a negative nine radical three. So it's just another method. It takes a little more time, but if you're really struggling, it's an option. All right, take care.